Matthew chapter number 7. I'll get there in a few moments. Matthew number 7, we'll start looking at verse number 22. Gulf Coast. And uh, there, 117 years ago, it was a home to 40,000 people. That's a lot of people. Uh, Galveston was known at this time as the city that was built upon sand. The city that was built upon sand. Beautiful, beautiful. I mean, the ocean coming in there, just, uh, I mean, it's beautiful. Galveston is beautiful. If you've never been there, it's a, just a, a beautiful place to, to, to look at, to view. The days before the, the storm struck, they uh, have documented that Brother David, it was in the 80s. Beautiful weather, Brother Josh, just perfect days in the 80s. And uh, the temperatures being so amazing, and there were heavy uh, swells rolling in from the southeast, and, and uh, these violent waves, uh, they, they actually drove uh, swimmers from the water because they were so violent there. And it was during the night of September the 8th that uh, the south uh, eastern swells, they increased, by 17 uh, miles an hour, the wind was blowing, and, and all of a sudden, the surf began to invade the city of Galveston. During those evening hours, uh, uh, they awoke on Saturday morning, the wind was still blowing, now it was from 17 miles an hour up to 30 miles an hour. The streets began to flood with water. Those who in the morning uh, who left for work a little later in the day the time they came home for their lunch break it is documented that they waited in water up to their chin to come home to get lunch homes uh it was amazing as the water began to rise homes began to be just pushed right off of their foundations they said that the tin roofs begin just to slide off uh, as the houses slid from their foundations. Tin roofs begin to, 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 to fall, and uh, they became just a knife to anyone or anything that was in their way. They just cut into it. And uh, uh, homes uh, were washing away, and, and uh, by 4 p.m., the hurricane had hit full force. Can you imagine? 
the morning hours, uh, uh, early morning hours, water up to your chin, but now by 4 p.m., the hurricane hits full force, and uh, the barometric pressure was a record low at 27.49, and that's all that they could document because uh, uh, their equipment broke. That meant that the wind speed was up to 140 mile an hour. Can you imagine? Uh, here it is, uh, and we don't have all the equipment, the satellites, and the radar uh, that, 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 that we, we have nowadays. They didn't have that. And uh, throughout the evening, throughout the night, it was terrible as the hurricane passed over. And they said when dawn came on the night that there were 3,600 buildings that were completely gone. Uh, uh, there was nothing but just mounds of debris that was left in the center of the island. Uh, we think about natural disasters, things like the 1871 Chicago fire. We think about even here in our state in 18. Uh, 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 89, the, the Johnstown flood. We think about uh, uh, San, uh, the San Francisco hurricane in, in 1906, but nothing they say is compared to this hurricane that hit Galveston, where there were 6,000 people killed, and then there were 6,000 people who were hurt or wounded, and then there was another 10,000 that were left homeless. Can you imagine? The aftermath of this storm is just, it's hard to imagine. But the great storm of 1900, there was nothing they could do to stop the storm. Galveston was said that it was a city that was built on the slope of the sand and on the shore, and they thought that they were fine. Nothing would happen to them. But they realized there was nothing they could do to stop the storm. But they realized that there was something they could do to prevent the damage from the storm. So all of a sudden, after the storm of, of, of 1900, that September the 8th, they decided that they would bring in, so the city, they, they, they pumped in 7 million cubic yards of sand to raise the island, and then they built a concrete seawall, and then they put a granite outcroppings uh, 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 along uh, uh, that uh, to, to, to protect it. And so it took them five years after this great storm to build the wall and give themselves a sense of protection. Tonight, it's time to build a wall. It's time to build a wall. Jesus said this in Matthew chapter number 7, verse number 22. He's... Let me turn there. He said, Many shall say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name and in your name cast out devils in your name that many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you, worker, you, you who work iniquity. Therefore, whosoever hears these sayings of mine and, and does them, I will liken unto a wise man who built his house upon the rock, and the rains descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon the house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And everyone who, who hears these sayings of mine and, and does them not shall be likened uh, unto the foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And when the rains descended and the floods came and the winds blew, beat upon the house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. Amen. Uh, it's time tonight to build a wall. Uh, there was a book that was written about the great flood of, of, of Galveston there on September the 8th of, uh, 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 of 1900. And the, the title of the book was called this, A Weekend in September to Remember. So may I grab these things from, from, from Galveston, Texas, and may I say this, that it's time to build a wall, but it's time to have a weekend in September that we can remember because we built a wall. Theirs was because of a flood. Theirs was because of destruction. Amen. But ours can be because of the presence of God. 
the setting of the scripture that I just read to you, Jesus had, 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 had just uh, completed uh, some teachings, uh, the setting of the, the Sermon on the Mount, and, and uh, after his teachings, teaching, the Lord described two men. The two men were very similar. They both built houses. They both experienced the storm. However, they were different. One was built upon the rock, and, and the other was built upon the sand. One survived, but one perished. And he said, whosoever heeds to the teachings of mine will be like the man who built his house upon the rock and he survived. Don't you want to be that man tonight? Amen. Don't you want to be that woman tonight that builds their house upon the rock? Amen. And when the storms come, and they will, they will. Sometimes it's hard to even uh, begin to, 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 to pinpoint and say, how hard will the storm be? Even Irma was, was much more devastation was expected than what they were. So they were a little off. But there are times where some storms come and they don't expect it. Sometimes they just swirl around overhead and, and who knows what damage they're going to give. But the storms will come and we've got to be ready for them. I want you to think about this. In the past 10 years, statistics say that sexual content and violence on TV has tripled. Has tripled. There's a major storm. Uh, there's a major storm. I'm telling you that the anchor lines are getting frayed because of the storm. We've got to build a wall. Oh, Jesus, uh, he, he told the Pharisees, he praised them for their ability to predict storms. Uh, but he said you can do it physically, but you cannot do it spiritually. You are ignorant of spiritual meteorology. You've got to be wise because storms are going to come. And you've got to build your house upon the firm foundation. How many have you ever had before, maybe you had this happen to you, how many have ever had a spider or a bug get on your windshield and you notice it while you're driving? Any of you ever do that? Maybe the spider goes spider web on there. Maybe there's a bug that's on there. Maybe it grabs hold to your windshield wipe or whatever it may be. And you may watch that, and, uh, that, that bug, that insect, that spider for a while. Uh, but you know, when you begin to pick up momentum, there will probably come a time when all of a sudden, whether you see it or you look back, and that insect will be gone. Do you know what? The winds are blowing strong enough because of your force and your acceleration that Brother Josh, that bug just can't hold on anymore. And so it has to let go. I need to tell you that we need tonight a weekend in September to remember where we get our grip strong, where we build a law, where we anchor down because we don't know what storms are coming. So we grab hold tight and build the wall. We can't stop the storms from coming, but we sure can do everything within our power to build a wall and build upon the rock that the devastation is not great when the winds prevail and when the rains and the floods come. Now I know Galveston still experienced in Harvey millions and billions of dollars, but there's still a wall. Amen. The city's not gone. So we've got to build a wall. We've got to prepare for a storm. I'm not talking about a generator. I'm not talking about food. I'm not talking about water. How many of you ever remember Y2K? Any of you remember that? 17 years ago. What a bunch of hullabaloo. What a hype. I mean, we thought that this was, uh, you know, they, 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 they led us to believe that it was, it was the very beginning of Armageddon. You know, uh, they, they just, all this, and people went out and bought food and, and, and everything because of Y2K and, and, and the chips. Uh, but but I, I want you to know something, that when the storms are about to come, I love what Luke 21, verse number 28 says, when we look around spiritually, amen, have you, have you looked at the temperature? Have you looked at the forecast? If you look at, at 2 Timothy chapter number 3, he says, perilous times shall come. Men will be lovers of their own self, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness and denying the power thereof. Uh, they're they're, they're, they're going to be unthankful. They're going to be unholy. That is the current weather condition. There is a storm, a brewing. 
But what did Jesus say in Luke 21, verse number 28? He said, and when these things begin to pass, lift up your head for your redemption draweth not. Amen. Can we build a wall tonight? And can we begin to lift up our head? Because our redemption is drawing not. Amen. We hear of wars and rumors of wars. We hear of earthquakes. We hear storms. I, you know, there are some that are predicting that sometime this month is the end of the world. Did some of you see that? Uh, there are some folks that claim to be uh, numerologists from the Bible. They're predict the predicting is it the 23rd or the 28th that at the end of the I, I'm not looking at that. I'm not looking at all. I, Jesus said, when you see the signs around you, lift up your eyes for your redemption draweth not. Amen. It's time to build a wall and lift our eyes heavenward tonight. Amen. Praise God. Lift our eyes toward heaven. The psalmist said, in Psalms 58, verse number 3, One time I am afraid I will trust in Thee, O God. You know, Christians, they have a lot of, these days, a lot of faith, negative faith. I mean, they believe that things are getting worse. But they don't have a lot of faith to lift up their eyes and trust in God that God's going to take care of us. But it's time tonight to build a wall. A wall that lifts up our eyes. A wall that helps us to look to God that God's going to take care of us. Do you remember the apostle Paul who stood in the midst of the storm? In Acts 27, he told them, and he said, Be of good cheer. He said, There's not going to be a loss of any man's life here among us. He said, But of the ship. He said, Because this, this evening God sent an angel. Amen. And, and he spoke to me, telling me to fear not. Amen. We may lose the ship, but amen, we need to hear from God because we built a wall. We're going to be all right. Amen. We're going to be all right. I'm telling you, storms are going to come in life. We can't stop the storms. We can't even predict them well. Amen. God's not worried about us predicting the exact nature of the storm and how bad it's going to be. But God's concerned about us building upon the rock. I'm talking about a weekend in September to remember where we build upon the rock. God, I'm putting my roots down deeper. I'm tightening the hatch down stronger. I'm anchoring myself deeper to the rock. This is a weekend in September that I will remember. It took them five years to build the wall of Galveston, but they were doing all that they could do to protect themselves against future storms. But amen, we as believers got to protect ourselves against the storms of the future. Amen. We, we can't come up with a wall on our own, but Jesus is the wall. But we got to build it deeper and higher in our life. I believe that one of the ways that we can certainly build the wall and make it a weekend to remember is when we offer sacrifice of praise to God. Worship has become so... I, I, I shake my head when, when, when I hear folks describe their definition of worship. But let me tell you, worship is a sacrifice. But they, they went out, they wrestled down the animal. How many wrestle with God lately? I mean, I'm talking about wrestling down the animal. They wrestled the animal down. And then Brother Josh, they slaughtered the animal. And then there was the work sister Rachel. They brought it and they, 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 they offered it as a sacrifice. It wasn't something that was easy. It wasn't something that was loose. It wasn't something that was just thrill, a, 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 a venture, a, a thrill adventure for that individual. But it was a lot of work. I want to get it. I believe that we need some Abrahamic experiences where we learn about sacrificial worship. You stay down here. Aladdin and I will well be on. And as Abraham went, Daddy, where's the sacrifice? Oh, son, God will provide. Thy God will provide. 
I don't know everything Abraham was thinking. He was trusting God. But he was going to a place where he was completely trusting God. Even when he had the knife in hand to slay his son, he was still trusting God. And God provided. Do you know what builds a wall for us? It is called sacrificial worship. Amen. You may say, I'm busy. No, you're too busy. Amen. You need to put something aside. And you need to have sacrificial worship. But God, brothers and sisters, you don't know what I'm going through or how I feel about God, right? God wants sacrificial worship. Amen. It's called Nike and Weekend to Remember in September where we really build a wall and anchor ourselves down to the rock as we worship Jesus Christ. There are six psalms that are called psalms that are engraved in gold. And these six psalms, they start out with uh, uh, the psalmist, uh, a, a big uh, starting with a complaint, if you would. But all of a sudden, the complaint begins to take a, a metamorphosis, and it changes from being a complaint to being a worship and a praise unto God. Amen. A weekend in September where we bring our needs before God, and they begin to transform themselves as worship and praise unto God. There's something that we must do to build a wall. And uh, this is the last thing that I want to talk about tonight. But we have to resist a spirit of complacency. But if we're going to have a weekend in September to remember where we're building a wall for future storms. We don't want to want the storms to brother brother wall. They can be big. They can be boisterous. They can be life-changing. But they need the important self esteem if we go to walk. But we can't be complacent. Probably one of the greatest status stories of complacency is a man named Samson. He had the Spirit of God upon his life, but he was complacent with the Spirit of God. His own thing. His own way, his own time, his own agenda. But Samson, don't you realize the presence of God that's upon you? In the life of Delilah, Sammy, Sammy, the Philistines are upon you. And he awoke, but he was not with the Spirit of God upon the throne. Oh, Samson, how I wish you had gone upon the rock. How I wish that you would have had a weekend in September to remember. What did Paul tell Timothy? He said, Timothy, I want you to shake up the gift that is within you. Any of you like Italian dressing here? Any of you like Italian dressing on your salad? I'll guarantee you, brother, brother Eli, brother Craig, one of the first things you do before you pour that Italian dressing on there, you take that bottle and you shake it. Because if you look at it, it'll be all separated. It sure wouldn't be good slugging down all that oil, would it? Your arteries would be closed and uh, it wouldn't even taste good as you're getting closed, right? <laughs> but you shake it because you know it's there. You could be complacent and pour it out, but you sure wouldn't enjoy it. If we're not careful, we become complacent. And the spice and the taste of life is not what it should or could be. There's a wall that never remains built. And there's a story <coughs> in September never to remember. But when we shake up the gift that is within us, we stir it up, as Paul told John Timothy, Stir it up. It was in your grandmother and your mother. It was in Eunice and Lois. Just shake it. Stir it up. It's there. And so as we do that, you know what he was literally telling Timothy? He was saying this. He said, Timothy, I want you to fan the flames. You ever do that when a fire begins to go out? What do you do? You don't become complacent, but you fan the flames. You get some air, some draft going in there. You give it some more fuel. You know that that air, that fuel is important to it to keep it burning. And so you don't want to become complacent. You want the fire to burn. I'm glad to know tonight that there is safety in the storms. 
but it all starts, if you will, because of this month, a weekend in September to remember. And you build a wall. Listen, I know tonight's a simple thought. But we're all familiar with the storms and how devastating they can be. The storms of life will be normal. But the difference is that we work very hard to the wall to give us protection in the storm. David said, Offer unto the Lord thanksgiving, and pay thy vows unto the utmost high. And call upon me in the day of trouble, and I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify me. I want you to know that even though the storms may be brewing, and they are spiritual, lift up your eyes to that. Make this a weekend in September to remember that you're building a wall, and storms will not bring devastation. They may affect you, but you have built your life upon the wall. One wise man, one foolish man. Both went through the storm, but only one survived. The one who built his house upon the wall. The storms will come back. The winds will blow, sister, but the rock will keep you firm. Would you make tonight a weekend in September to remember? As you pray, we'll be gathering tonight. Amen. Let's pray. All right.